the reason why, why, why you, a mind, a person, would still be dependent on the pleasure of the senses, despite knowing how little satisfaction they provide and so on, fundamentally, they don't really know where the problem is. So you, you know that um, the sense objects, the, the pleasures you get from them are not satisfactory and so on, but you don't really uh, understand the extent of the sense objects. You don't really understand the extent of the pleasure you're chasing. So in other words, when you think about the dissatisfactory nature of the sense objects, that is not uh, entirely accurate, because if it were entirely accurate, you would then also understand the peril of it and you would lose any desire and zeal towards it. So the problem with um, people still being attracted to that which they know does not um, result in, in, in happiness and it's actually doing them more harm than good. The problem that people are still addicted to the pleasures of the senses is they don't see where that pleasure begins. They only see uh, what they're used to uh, seeing on the level of the sense objects. But there is more to that picture that, uh, that it's left out because of which uh, the addiction is not uprooted. And uh, that which is left out is your own body. It's pretty much the relationship of your own mind with your own body, of you with your own body. So when people get attracted to the sense objects, they don't realize that they have already accepted the pleasure and the attraction of their own body as the basis for those sense objects further. And uh, that's why the Buddha said, for as long as one one's mind is not developed in regard to its own body, the uh, desire to sensuality will be there. So you have to start, you have to be, uh, you have to, uh, like, when, when there is the, the, the say, uh, a, a central pull towards sense objects or for the pleasure of it, at the same time, your body, your senses are there peripherally, enduring as a basis from which you are pressured. So it's the relationship on that peripheral level between you and that body that it's pressuring you towards sense objects. That's what needs to be understood. And the reason why that's so hard to understand or it takes a lot of effort to understand is because the, the body the, as, a, as a unity of your sense organs does not appear, cannot appear on the level of your sense objects. So your dependence on the pleasures of the sense objects is actually determined and, and dependent upon the pressure that your own body exerts on your mind. So that's the whole uh, similes we gave in the past of, you know, taming an elephant or taming a bull. Um, it's like, um, it's a wild animal that you are tied to, inseparable from, your mind and uh, that wants to go left and right and eat this and not eat that and avoid this and it will pressure you uh, until he gets what he wants. So the question is not about removing the, uh, the agreeable and enticing things from the world to be free. The question is about taming that which pressures you because of which you're not free. Um, so that's why a person is still attracted to the sense objects despite knowing how little uh, satisfaction sense objects provide because that's the, the knowledge is limited the knowledge of oh this is dissatisfactory is pretty much only within the sense objects failing to see this whole kind of underlying pressure of your own body and the pleasure you depend on on the level of the body failing to see this wild animal underneath so they don't see that as a problem they only think these sense objects that I, I, remain, I, I become obsessed about, that's where the problem is. No, that's pretty much the, the end result of the problem already being there and uh, fully controlling you. So that's why, yes, the sense restraint and not engaging with those sense objects that are inciting of lust and so on is the prerequisite. Uh, and then you get to see really the roots of the problem, which is pretty much the, the body, the, the senses, that crave the pleasure that they're used to. That's it. So if you don't uh, engage with the pleasures that they're used to, that used to part will fade away. Uh, the dependence on that will, will cease because they haven't been engaging with it. So that's like the, uh, if, 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 if the animal is engaged in a, in a perpetually wild behavior, it's gonna become used to that. And that will be its norm. That will be its measure. That will be its need. But if then the animal, is not allowed to engage with his 
sight, sound, smell, taste, touches, they would be making its mind wild and so on, it will come down. Whether you want to come down or not, it will come down because things that are uh, of the agitating nature, things that are of the perturbing nature, are, are now things that uh, the animal has not been engaging with. So if you want to uproot the dependence on the pleasure of the sense objects, you pretty much have to uproot the dependence of the pleasure of this body, the agreeability, uh, the ownership, the um, not seeing it uh, peripherally as a thing that endures there on its own, uh, with its own thirsts and hungers and perceptions and so on. So you need to fully disown the body, but that can only be done on the level of that correct peripheral recognition of what the body is. It cannot be done on the level of observing the body with your senses because, see, you're not observing the body. You're observing the sense objects that require the body. And even if you're, like, you know, catching every moment and every sensation that passes through the body, that's all on the level of sense objects. Uh, and that's why not, none of that which is uh, underneath it, which is that necessary requirement for, for perceiving the sense objects, None of that will be affected by, by that practice and by those efforts. Um, again, in the same sense, an eye cannot see itself. And for as long as you believe that you can, you will be pretty much uh, engaged in, in very futile attempts of, uh, of accessing the, that which is inaccessible. Accessing your senses on the level of sense objects. And that's a contradiction in terms. So you need to see the body on the level of the senses, so on the level of the framework of the, the world of the sense objects, fully purify the relationship between you and that body that, that appears peripherally, that's present peripherally, while you are engaged with sense objects, or when you're engaged with sense objects. You know, so for as long as you have sight, eyes, nose, and so on, the world of the sense objects is there, and uh, the body, as the unity of the sense organs is peripheral to that it's 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 always it's it's um it's always the background of that domain of the sense objects and that's where you need to see it so it's not about examining the this um, individual organs and looking at it with other sense organs it's about understanding the sixth sense base it's understanding the the, the body as that thing which is there that needs to be tamed on the level of that peripheral through not engaging with actual sense objects that are pulling you. Uh, and then that pressure that that body exerts over you will diminish. And, uh, and the clearer you see it on that level, that's revealed through sense restraint, by the way, uh, the more you get used to it. And the more you get used to it, the less pressure you will be. And uh, then uh, the body will be seen correctly and uh, any possibility of the pleasure to be accessed, to be experienced through that body uh, will not be something that will interest your mind because the mind would see the extent of danger if, if it chooses to go down that rabbit hole. Uh, so um, the first, as I, so just to sum up basically, the first thing you want to do is um, if you want to stop chasing the sense pleasures, is start, uh, start practicing mindfulness of the body correctly, not as an observation technique or watching sensations or modern vipassanas or whatever, but by seeing it peripherally as an enduring um, bag, of, bag of skin that contains the sense organs that are attracted to the various pleasures that they get in their respective domains. You want to learn how to see the body for what it is as a thing in the world on the level of peripheral without needing to attend to it directly. And you will get to see that if you have been practicing sense restraint sufficiently, guarding of the sense door sufficiently, being moderately eating, watchfulness, and dwelling in solitude. Because company and the world it pretty much requires your mind to be on the level of sense objects. Um, and if you have not been sufficiently withdrawn from that, you will not, you simply, um, there isn't enough space say, like that, for you to step back, to get to see this body as, as a thing that induced there in the world, as a basis for all the sense objects and so on. You will not be able to see the relationship between the two and you will not be able to see the, the right order between the two. So through sense restraint, moderation eating and, and guarding of the sense doors and dwelling in solitude, you get to discern the body 
has a thing on its own in, in their bag of skin with the sense organs that have its own um, uh, respective domains that they're attracted to, repelled from, and so on. And uh, you will see then that the pleasure of the sense objects actually begins. It's actually rooted and it remains on the level of that peripheral body and those sense organs. They're the ones thirsting after and craving for and so on. And uh, now that you have been sufficiently withdrawn from it, uh, you can actually disown that whole pressure and the pull of these individual organs. You can see them as individual five individual animals that the Buddha gave the simile of. You could see these. Oh, these are the wild animals that need training. When people are engaged and not withdrawn sufficiently from the sense objects, they, they can't. They see that only in abstraction, which means they don't see it. Um, they don't see their organs as, as an independent entities that pretty much have its own life and cravings and needs that they need to tame and control. So each time there is a pull from the sight, sound, smell, taste, or touch, they are the ones pulled by sight, sound, smell, taste, or touch. They don't see anything in between because those sense organs, those animals, do not appear on the level of sense objects that you're so used to looking at and measuring existence by. So that's why the whole practice of sense restraint and that correct mindfulness, that peripheral awareness we often talk about, it's that peripheral signs and features of that body that exists on the level around that which you're attending, at the background of it, that's what the body is. That's, the, that's what the Buddha meant by saying, knowing the body to the extent necessary for the final knowledge. That's the measure of that extent. How familiar with the phenomenon of the body you are on the level of peripheral. How steady your mind is in discerning the, you know, the presence of the body for what it is on its own uh, without needing to attend to it directly, without needing to make it a sense object. Uh, and if you develop that extent sufficiently, yeah, there will be no more... Uh, you will not be underlined by lust and craving and thirst of the individual senses. By not seeing the senses, by being on the level of sense objects, that's how you are underlined by all the asavas, underlying tendencies. They underline you because you go over them. So they become that which is under you and it kind of directs you and pushes you and controls you. So you want to develop your mind to the extent necessary when you're not underlined, when you underline them. Let's say like that. That's in another sutta, but it would have said, the Narahan's mind is not overwhelmed by uh, things, by dhammas, by, by pressures, by so on. He is the one that overwhelms them. And that's what it's meant by, by the order, establishing the right order, seeing what comes first, seeing the body on the level of the peripheral as that which is first, and not losing that context, despite of what comes on the individual basis of, of your attention, and so on. So whatever you're attending to, whatever pressure there is, desire for pleasure, and so on, the order of that's determined by your knowledge now does not change. You still see that peripheral body as the necessary basis for all of this that's happening. And all you need to do is, oh, if I protect the order, there will be no room to become underlined by perverting the order by last aversion or distraction. Practice that sufficiently and, and uh, last aversion and distraction will completely fade because they have not been maintained through the perversion of the order. That's why Ananda said in that sutta that sensuality in itself is the exact perversion of the order. Putting the sense object first and everything else measured through that as second and not seeing the body peripherally, the necessary basis of sense organs peripherally, the sixth sense base peripherally for what it is to the extent that it is as that which is first the necessary container for everything else appealing or disagreeable in the world. So if you unpervert that perception, there is absolutely no room for, for lust to breed and expand and so on, or aversion or distraction. So that's it.